right now on 5 on Your Side at 10. He witnessed another teen's death. Weeks later, he was reported missing. I miss him with all my heart. Tonight, his parents tell the I-Team they believe their son's disappearance is connected. The pursuit of precipitation is coming up empty. Why our rain chances look minimal through the rest of the week. Our top story, budget battle. Fireworks at tonight's county council meeting. And I need you to respect the chair. What pots of money are magically going to appear? <laughs> Within the last two hours, the St. Louis County Council passed their spending plan for 2024. Good evening. I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Kelly Jackson. The council's budget is at odds with the county executive's plan. Laura Barczewski is live in Clayton with what vital services could see significant cuts next year. Laura. Mike and Kelly, the St. Louis County Council passed their amended budget going against County Executive Sam Page's budget, claiming that their cuts will save more than $14 million. Ahead of Tuesday's St. Louis County Council meeting, County Executive Sam Page sent a letter to the council saying if they pass their proposed budget cuts, ARPA-funded projects will be put on hold. There would be cuts to the teams who deal with problem properties. The senior tax freeze would also be on hold, and tax bills would no longer be mailed to residents. Page was not at the meeting Tuesday, and many of the council members were critical of the letter, saying Page's budget would hurt the county and taxpayers. Unfortunately, instead of taking our input and working together on that plan, we simply received a budget request that increases spending and also increases taxes. That is not being fiscally responsible. Councilman Mark Harder says he's considered this letter from Page to be a threat to the very projects many of them worked on. If we vote against this, then we will somehow save those, those uh, projects around the county. So um, I thought it was a very, um, I guess, disappointing is, is the word that comes to, to mind when it comes to this. The county council's amended budget proposed cuts to several offices, including the public administrator, Tim Weeks' office, which he said during public comment would be detrimental to helping vulnerable children who age out of the state's care and elderly abandoned by family. This office is fully staffed and uses almost every dollar that we've been allowed in our 2023 budget, and we intend to continue that in 2024. But if these cuts are allowed to proceed, that will severely hinder our ability to do so. The council's budget would also cut money from public health and public works. Roads and sidewalks are the most common topic for con constituent comments and complaints because our safe streets and sidewalks have long been our county's points of pride. Yet we are being asked to cut more than $2 million out of the public works budget. Council Chairwoman Shalonda Webb says there will be an opportunity next year to reevaluate these cuts that were largely passed by a majority of the members. In the second quarter, we can have some of those conversations about supplement bills. That's fair, everybody. Yes, this is hard. We're not afraid of hard. We do hard. But we can do it better if we work together, talk honestly and open and transparent with each other, and stop trying to legislate with headlines and threats. Council Chairwoman Webb says that these cuts that they approved tonight will cut in half their $27.3 million deficit that the county currently has. Reporting live in Clayton, Laura Barczewski, five on your side. Tonight, a 12 year old boy is in juvenile custody charged with first degree assault. Investigators say he shot his mother's boyfriend in the head. The shooting happened overnight in a home on Sullivan Avenue in North City. St. Louis police say the boy's mother and her boyfriend had been arguing when the boy grabbed a gun and pulled the trigger. He later showed up to the police station with his mother. The, boy, the mother's boyfriend remains in the hospital tonight. Tonight, two teenagers are in custody after a St. Louis officer fired shots at one of them. Police say this all started when the two teenagers were trying to break into cars along Morgan Ford in South St. Louis. And new tonight, Robert Townsend talked to one expert about the teen violence that's not letting up. Mike and Kelly investigators say one of the teens pulled a gun on the officer this morning in South City. Now the expert I spoke with hopes juvenile judges and prosecutors hear the message she's driving home. It's just before 9 on Tuesday morning. You think two 16 year olds would be in school. Instead, police say a witness spotted the boys breaking into cars on Merlette Court near Morgan's Ford in South St. Louis. 
Uh, it's very, very scary just to hear that that's happening here, right here in our streets. Drew Callmeyer and his wife have lived in the neighborhood for three years. This is actually a very safe, safe street. Um, this cul-de-sac has never had any sort of crime that I know of. It's shocking. Police say when they tried to stop the teens, one of them ran off. They say an officer ordered the boy to stop, but the young suspect reached into a satchel and pulled out a gun. The officer feared for his life and fired multiple shots. Police arrested the teenager in a front yard. We've seen this go on a lot around here in the summer, and I thought maybe weather would have a little bit of something to do with it and maybe curb it a bit. But the bold crimes police say young people are committing aren't slowing down. Clinical psychologist and Webster University professor Dr. Jamika Woody Cooper says the troubling trend won't stop until... Courts are going to have to get a lot tougher with the consequences. Punishment is going to have to be swift and it's going to have to be steep and it's going to have to be consistent also. Now, Dr. Woody Cooper also says more parents need to be held more accountable and steer their children away from crime and violence. Neither the teenager nor the officer was hurt in that incident. Robert, thanks. Tonight, the National Park Service confirms it's investigating a report of a sexual assault on the Gateway Arch grounds. The report was made on December 6th. Officials tell us an arrest was made, but gave no other details. We'll continue to work to find out more. Tonight, the FBI is offering a $10,000 reward for information on this man. The feds say he's wanted for a hate crime against a transgender victim on a metro bus. That attack back in April was caught on camera, and we must warn you, the video you're about to see is graphic. The suspect got on a metro bus at the intersection of Grand and Chippewa. Agents say he started kicking and punching a transgender woman after she rejected his advances. He also pulled out a gun. Again, the FBI is offering a $10,000 reward in this case. Just hours ago, Senator Josh Hawley of Missouri made yet another impassioned plea on the Senate floor for victims of nuclear waste radiation. Of the need to do justice to these good Americans, who have, let's just tell it like it is, been poisoned by their own government, who have been exposed to nuclear waste, nuclear radiation by the United States government. Funding for the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act was stripped from the latest defense bill. It would provide compensation for tens of thousands of Americans exposed to the government's radioactive material, including those exposed to waste in Coldwater Creek and the Westlake landfill. New tonight, the mystery surrounding a party where a young man died from a gunshot wound has deepened. One of the witnesses disappeared just weeks after the death with authorities are calling a suicide and then a jury called a death by violence. The I-team's Christine Byers has been following the story since it began more than two years ago and tonight has a family's plea for answers. Durante Martin was just 19 years old when he died from a gunshot wound to his head. It happened here in April of 2021 at a party in Fredericktown, Missouri. John Paul Parton, also 19 at the time, was there when it happened. Madison County 911, what's the address of your emergency? Uh, apparently a guy just shot himself. You can hear someone yell his name, John Paul, during the 911 call, which the I-team obtained. Police initially ruled Durante's death a suicide. His family insisted Durante, who is black, was murdered at the home. It hurts my heart to know that somebody hurt my grandson. And possibly because of the color of his skin. Three weeks later, John Paul Parton disappeared. The Jefferson County Sheriff's Office says it doesn't know if his disappearance is connected to Durante's death or the party at the home. I miss him with all my heart. The last day the Partons saw their son was May 16th, 2021. They admit they've fallen apart since then. And they can't stop thinking about what he told them that morning about the party where his friend Durante died. He said he was there, that it was not a suicide, it was a murder. Two months later, the jury in a coroner's inquest agreed. It determined Durante died by violence. That conflicts with the Missouri Highway Patrol investigation, which found no evidence of foul play. And the homeowner and several others who were at that party also testified that it was a suicide. John Paul wasn't among them. His family had already filed a missing persons report. We just want to know. And one day it'll all come out. The Bartons also say their son told them he had burglarized a business with a few of his friends the day he went missing. 
They also wonder whether a disagreement between them could have led to their son's disappearance. If you have any information about this case, call the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department at 636-797-5000. For the I-Team, Christine Byers, five on your side. And if you have a tip for Christine on the Five on Your Side I-Team, you can leave a voice message at 314-444-5231 or send an email to tips at ksdk.com. All calls and correspondence will be kept confidential. Tonight, funeral plans are set for a Winfield High School senior who died in what authorities call a tragic duck hunting incident. 18-year-old Trent Bush was killed Sunday morning at Ted Shanks Conservation Area in Northern Pike County. A visitation would be held Friday from 4 to 9 at the Winfield Primary School Gym. Then there's a funeral mass celebrated Saturday at 10 a.m. at the Immaculate Conception Catholic Church in Un Monroe, Old Monroe. In lieu of flowers, the family is requesting memorial donations be made to Nub Ability. The athletic organization helps limb different children. The family says the group supported Trent after he lost his hand helping him find his enthusiasm again for hunting and welding. No parish elementary schools in the St. Louis Archdiocese will close for at least another year. That decision announced today. All pastors recommended their schools stay open for the 2024-25 school year. About one-third of the schools were consulted in the evaluation under the All Things New plan due to declining enrollment. Smooth sailing tonight in North County. MoDOT's Interstate 270 North Project is officially complete. Local and state leaders held a ribbon cutting today in Hazelwood. Work started in 2020, leading to years of detours and delays. Officials say the upgrades were worth the wait. We are confident the improvements that we made here will result in a lower crash rate and a lower fatality rate. MoDOT revamped seven interchanges between Lindbergh and Highway 367. There's also an extra lane, new bridges, and changes to traffic signals.